excellent. So uh, everyone, uh, thank you very much for watching the show. And I'm here with Ella Ume, who's the CEO of TwinPine. I think one of Africa's first uh, mobile ad networks. Is that correct, Ella? Um, absolutely, because it was the first. Um, we try to call ourselves Africa's specialist. Um, specialist mobile ad network. Okay. So maybe for some of the people who don't know um, exactly what a mobile ad network is, uh, maybe you can explain in your own words what TwinPine actually does. Um, what does TwinPine do? TwinPine helps, first of all, publishers make money from the content that they have, which is a lot. I mean, Africa has a lot of content. Um, we try to help publishers make money out of that by coming on board mobile. And we also try to help them, we try to help them stay focused on um, content in their core business, which is creating content. And by doing that, how do we do that? We do that by um, sourcing advertisers for them. And um, the advertisers come together and whatever um, revenues we make is split with the favor of the publishers. Do you share with the publishers Absolutely. and the advertisers? Maybe you can also, again, for the people who don't know what a um, mobile ad network is, maybe you can explain um, what exactly is a publisher in the, con in the context of a mobile ad network. Um, a publisher, so with a brand, I mean, what brand can I think of? Nation in Kenya, for instance, is a publisher. Mm -hmm. is a, Premium publisher, what we we'll call a premium publisher. The mm -hmm. publisher is anybody that owns content. It can be music content, it can be um, news content, it can be uh, football content, whatever content. So, Futa is a publisher in Kenya as well, and um, Choose Africa is a publisher in Kenya. Whoever owns content, so um, a journalist can own content. Yeah. Um, Muskemari.com is content, <laughs> so that is, that is what we do. Okay. And maybe you can share with us a little bit uh, of history around. Um, uh, TwinPine, how did it start? Uh, it's a very unusual in the sense that we normally see, you know, ad networks like in Mobi out of India, you know, Pass City, I think, out of uh, somewhere in Asia, you know, obviously uh, AdMob, which is acquired by Google. So tell us a little bit more about the origins of TwinPine. How did you guys get started? Um, very humble beginnings and still very humble. What we're trying to do, we, really, we saw an opportunity in, um, um, we, we were playing in mobile, um, and we were playing in mobile a lot of focus on the internet. And some opportunity that Africa's um, internet is going to be a mobile internet. And um, we saw that there was a big gap in getting publishers again to come on board mobile. Okay. And um, we felt that there was a need to come in from a development standpoint, which has been a lot of work, which is essential, and that, that covers essentially educating the, pub, the publishers on why mobile? So everybody wanted to come on, but they wanted to come online on the web because that's what they did. Correct, need. correct. Um, but that was wrong. It was a wrong direction because it's the, the, the mass market in Africa do not own decks of computers. What they Absolutely own not, is not. mobile phones. And they are poor for the way to access the internet from mobile devices. So going on the desktop and getting them um, going on desktop to publish your content was the, um, the right way to go. So we felt that we needed to come in and bridge that gap, and um, that led to the birth of TwinPine. Um, yeah, if that explains it. And I think that's very true because I think what you find in I think in the last couple of years this has been reinforced is that most of the internet in Africa is mobile. I think in Kenya, for instance, there's some research that we've done that over ninety percent of all internet access happens on mobile devices, if not through mobile connectivity. Um, maybe the next question I have for you is um, in terms of you know, obviously the market you work in is quite competitive. And maybe you can tell us about some of the things that make TwinPine unique or special uh, compared to some of the other mobile ad networks that are familiar with. Um, we see, yeah, very, very competitive space. Um, but for us, we, we, we approach it from what I would call the entire value chain. Yeah. So we take it from the, mo the customer's phone, from the mobile phone of the customer, down to the publisher. So we take the entire value chain. In between that value chain, we have the advertisers and we have the publishers. Um, so what does that mean in layman terms? It essentially means that Google has a whole bunch of um, ads, um, sorry, has a whole bunch of inventory, which is publishers on its network. Um, and people go on Google and sign up. Um, we don't do that. What we do is, we can do that, you can go on our network and sign up, but we are very focused on those publishers who we think have 70-80% of their, of, their, um, of their traffic coming yeah. from mobile. And, but they don't know it. And we have a lot of these publishers all around Africa, and they don't have mobile sites. Correct, we go to correct. them and we build dynamic pages for them. Google is not going to do that for you because Google is far away and phone Correct. And other networks, because mobile is something that's thriving globally, they take a whole bunch of pages 
put it together on the network and try to get advertisers to advertise on it. That's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is that when we come to a market, which we have done very successfully in Ghana, we've done very successfully in Nigeria, we've we started to build relationships to do very successfully in East Africa, is we go to every market, look at the market peculiarities, look at the dynamics of the market, look for the the publishers that will give us the volume. And you localize and we localize customers. absolutely and we customize that and, and get the advertisers, which will be very attractive to advertisers because that is essentially what they're looking for. I think um, you know many people maybe will be a little bit skeptical when you talk about an African ad network, especially um, coming out of Nigeria, you know the reputation. I don't think I need to go into more detail. Um, but I think I've known you for some time and you guys are doing some pretty incredible stuff. Uh, where do you see yourselves going in two to five years? I mean I think this could go anywhere. Um, I would like to touch on the point around coming out of Nigeria, absolutely. Even in Nigeria we suffered these perception issues. Um, agencies and brands in Nigeria didn't think um, it was for real. And the Nigerian business could come out and say they were trying to compete with Admore, they were trying to compete with Imobi, Boss City out of Singapore. Um, but we felt that um, we needed to have staying power. We needed to continue to show that we are credible. A lot of our leads have come from our publishers who we came to, we went to the publishers telling them we we'll help them make money. But they are the ones that went to meet the brand and said, I think you should work with these people. They came to us and they developed our business and so they were actually pushing, they were actually advertisers, pushing to advertisers to us. That's unusual. Yeah, that is absolutely unusual. But yeah. That is the case about it. If there's value, I think it's a matter of time and that value will be recognized from the most unusual sources. How do you deal with the challenge of technology? Because I know for a fact that most of the other ad networks, so it's desktop or mobile and a mix of both, uh, have a tendency of you know, really having very strong tech and very strong tech people. How are you guys addressing that challenge? Uh, how do you deal with um, you know, the issues of click fraud and so forth, which I know for a fact uh, are one of the challenges that ad networks face. How are you essentially coping with the tech, tech, tech aspect of the business? Um, we, 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 a couple of things we have, um, we've tried to go to, I think, Everybody will agree with me that Bangalore is somewhere that has, um, has yeah. huge innovation around technology, also has a huge supply of technology resources. Um, we have our technology out of Bangalore now. Um, we are, so actually using tech from India? Yes, we just um, bought a company um, we, which gave us manpower as well. Okay. And we are we're, we're good at managing our platform on an ongoing basis and um, we're working very, very closely on the, on the, on the tech of, of the world. Um, so issues around click fraud and things, our systems audits, um, our systems audit people look at that in detail before we our publishers, before making next publishers. And also um, we talk very closely with um, um, we look we, our systems audit get pay very close attention to those um, um, interviews in um, mobile advertising business. How about in terms of advertising? Do you find that on a Pan-African basis you're getting a lot of local revenue, meaning brands from Africa advertising on your platform? Or do you find that you have a lot more international, or what you call import revenue, people who are trying to target uh, consumers in Africa from outside? How's that going? Initially, in fact, our validation came from the international guys, um, which is what I said in my last one or previous papers. Um, it will come from the most unusual sources. The Nigerian ad network, but the international guys are to what we were doing. Um, what some of our first um, customers were Google, um, who also own it. Interestingly, we also own an ad network. Yeah. Um, but we have one of our first customers to the agencies. Um, we also, so a lot of it came from the international guys, but now it's gradually started to skew to the local. The locals are adopted. Why? Because when the global brands come on board, the locals just have no choice. You know, uh, the, key, the local case is the very, confidence uh, issue, maybe. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Confidence, perception. You know, it's um, the, the Nokia's an interesting one. We have started for Nokia for about eight months, and the Nokia International had to ask the local, local offices in Nigeria to start using those guys. But the results they're getting from us is interesting. It's been interesting. And we put it to local guys, but we didn't, we didn't get the buy I think when I asked you a couple of questions earlier, you mentioned that you position TwinFine as a premium network. Absolutely. Maybe you can elaborate on what that actually means um, for the people who may not know that. Absolutely. You know? So, um, there's two types of advertising in the mobile app business. One of it is um, blind advertising and the other is premium. By premium, we mean you will, we will tell you where your ads are running. We will send you screenshots. We will manage your process from beginning to end with you. We will walk you through strategy. Absolutely. We will walk you through strategy. We will give you a dashboard. We look at your stuff. Right? Um, 
if we do, when we build a lot of confidence, we can run your campaigns without you even paying. So, and that is what Africa needs. Beyond going online, making payments and all that kind of stuff, you need to, we need to educate Africans. We need to engage with them. We need to, there needs to be a hand Why? Because the never happened. The never happened in Africa. So we can't just look for things. There are certain building blocks that need to put in place. And we've talked through the process, and that is what we're applying. And it has worked so far, and I think it's going to continue to work across markets with a little tweak here and there. Another thing that I wanted to ask you is that we all know that most people in African markets access international content on the web. Uh, you're focusing on local content, meaning that you might not have as large an inventory with publishers as, say, you know, working with international publishers. From that point of view, does that represent any opportunities or challenges? The fact that you're working almost exclusively with local inventory, with local publishers? We, we, we haven't limited it to just local publishers. Um, we've done deals okay. with partners who are the international um, content for us. We've done deals who are the international um, publisher content. So if you think of the likes of um, um, Cosmo, you think of the likes of um, Uber Twitter, you think of the likes of um, ESPN, you think uh -huh. of the likes of those are industries that we're already self advertising. On. So, so you're able to actually back to the absolutely. Okay. You can do all that. Um, we've had those for several months, um, and um, we get a lot of demand around it as well. So that is just. Advertisers don't need to worry about international content and will give you what you want. Another thing I wanted to ask is that you know the African inventory, or rather the African consumer on mobile, uh, generally is using feature phones and is not really somebody who has a lot of disposable income. Uh, whereas, let's say, somebody viewing mobile ads in the US or Asia or Europe, obviously is on a smartphone and probably has a much higher amount of disposable income. Does that present any unique challenges in terms of how you're growing your network? Because Again, for a brand to target certain consumers, they're obviously looking um, for probably the most attractive consumer with the most money. But let's be honest, I mean, most of our users in Africa are at the bottom of the pyramid. So how does that work out for you? Because remember, the African market is predominantly feature phones, uh, whereas you know, internationally it's mostly smartphones and also rich media ads. Um, that's a very strong um, point. We, we, at Twin Pine, we have, it's been evolving, it's been evolving slowly. When we launch our network about 18 months ago, we will have 10% smartphones on the network and 90% feature phones. As of December 2012, we had 25% smartphones and 75% And that's just phones. Nigeria? That is just Nigeria. It's grown to 25%. It's, it's grown to 25%. And that's probably mostly Blackberries, yeah? Yeah, that's Blackberries and some, yeah, and Androids actually. Um, but it's grown. So the mix is changing it's, now. It's changing, it's changing. So what I always tell advertisers is, and publishers is, you don't need to sign up for mobile when it's 60, 40 in favor of Because you're going to make your mistakes and it will not cost you at that time. You need to get on board now, make the mistakes when it's still with feature phones, you're still dealing with the lower end of the market. Get the education now and start to move through the journey. By the time you want to get to 60%, everybody's going to be on mobile. And I think the next 18 to 24 months will be key and it's going to move very, very fast. As soon as smartphones get to the point where it's below $100, I think there's going to be a smartphone person. Obviously, that puts pressure on you to come up with more innovative ad units, I presume. We are already innovating around banners, kind of banners we sell. We are working closely with Nokia in the middle of uh, Northern East in Nigeria to innovate around banners like Nokia. Why Nokia? Because Nokia is, is going to push on the future phone market. So yeah. what, how can we innovate? We are innovating around um, running to shells on our network and splash screens and feature phones, those are some of the innovations that we're doing. On the smartphone side, there are several innovations we've lined up on which we're working on in the tech world. Well, thank you very much, Yellow. I'm glad thank that I got a chance to catch up with you here in Nairobi. And for everyone watching this on MosesCanBeMara.com, uh, I think we're going to keenly see how TwinPine does in the next 18 to 24 months. And uh, I suppose wish them all the best in, in Kenya where they're setting up operations. Thanks Excellent. very much, Moses. Okay. Thank you for your time.